I want to love this, but it's full of unfortunate issues to live up to the highs of the series that preceded it. Hey, are you subscribed? Have you rung the bell to get notified of any time I upload? Do that now. Can we give this video to 20 likes? Let's try it. The Last Kingdom is one of my favorite TV series of the last decade staying constantly good all the way until the near-perfect finale. It adapted 10 of the 13 Saxon stories books, so when a movie announcement came, I was excited for more. They seemed hyped to tell one more story. And that story is chock full of every kind of crazy twist, gut punch, shocking reveal, epic battle, heartfelt performance, and wonderful humor that The Last Kingdom was known for. The strength of these elements cannot and should not be denied, as it does wrap up the biggest lingering question from the end of the series about a united England, among other arcs. How necessary that was is actually debatable, but I appreciate the effort they put into it, even if I find some of the storytelling decisions to be eye roll inducing or head scratching. It looks as if instead of adapting two books into eight to 10 episodes, like the other seasons did, they made three books into one movie. And my gosh, does it show. The pacing is some of the most ridiculous fast I have ever seen. It is abundantly clear where an extra season would have focused time or where books end only for them to be resolved within two minutes of screen time instead of multi-episode arcs. Like if a character does this and has an episode to think about it, it's just, a lot. All the crazy things that happen here are nearly robbed of their full thematic weight because they're given no time to breathe or decompress to allow the viewer to process anything. It makes for a fun but very frustrating experience as fans. My wife and I feel torn as we loved seeing everyone again but could not get over the fact that it is quite literally a season's worth of television edited down into less than two hours. Why couldn't there have just been a three hour film? Or let alone a two and a half hour one? Probably budget and Netflix, but good grief, this also could have just been a trilogy of movies because I'd be hard pressed to believe there isn't more material that wasn't filmed. The villain falls completely flat and therefore the sense of scale mixed in with the personal angle doesn't hit as hard as it usually does like in the show, but it's still visceral and engaging every step of the way. It's also a bit strange with the continuity. Many characters don't get much love or any mention due to the runtime, or some feel sorely absent within the final moments. Logic gaps form with how the editing communicates time and events. There was lots of pausing and confusion on our end at least. People's families that we've seen throughout the series never show, nor their fates revealed, and it's never addressed. I found myself saying I needed to rewatch the show once more to figure this stuff out, but then realized it's kind of on the movie for not dropping some dialogue hints or being better at communicating what it needs to visually or through dialogue. How it all comes together in the final scene is quite touching, beautiful, and ultimately it actually does feel heard. You have to chug through the aforementioned non-stop pacing, fast travel, and very abrupt out of character moments to get there, but once I did, I couldn't help but feel extremely moved by the surprisingly ambiguous ending. Again, that probably is a bit unnecessary given how I looked up how the books ended, and we're missing our favorite voiceover, but it largely lands. I got the feels, and I suppose they left it more open-ended just in case they ever were greenly for more or wanting to come back. I want to love it, but I have to settle for simply enjoying it with frustrations. Not everything lands, some of it is angry and confusing or even saddening, and some of it is epic, beautiful, and intimate, and just captivating storytelling, just like the show was. It's very much in a natural extension. Even if it does unfortunately kind of spoil the perfect ending of season five, robbing much of the happiness of that time, but given it's based on history, I suppose that was inevitable and kind of in theme with the show. I sincerely believe that if this was a full season six, or even two or three movies that flesh out everything they couldn't, it would have been received as one of Netflix's best, as an epilogue to the most underrated show in years. I really did like it. It was a very good movie, a very strong story, only led down by how it was structured and a few puzzling story decisions when compared to the source material. It's sad to see it end. Thanks for all the great content over the years. Utrid, son of Utrid, destiny is all. I give Seven Kings Must Die 3.5 out of five stars. It's hard to justify sounding so negative when you actually really enjoyed something. It's just, it could have been a four and a half or a five star movie, you know it could have, but it has those elements that just bring it all the way down. Rating stuff is hard, y'all. Thanks so much for watching, like this video, and remember, always look for the good.